This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company located in Cary, Ohio, where they usually say our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. Great seasoning such as the Sonoran Heat, the Cajun, the Two Border, Cary Steak, the Discord, and the Old Fashioned. Take a run with any of those great seasonings over at the MedCanadianBBQ.com. Um, their site should be up shortly as I'm checking this as we're recording. It is still down, and I believe he should be coming back from vacation here uh, shortly. So once that site's up, be sure to um, get your hand on all of those seasonings. Again, over at the MedCanadianBBQ.com. Be sure to use that promo code SLOOPCAST, SLOOPCAST10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order. McKinney Barbecue Company, where he has your butt covered. This episode of the Sloopcast also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Iron Bean Coffee Company is a premium small batch roast order veteran owned coffee company. World class hand roasted micro batch coffee, fresh roasted to your order. It does not sit around in a warehouse. It does not sit around in a truck. It does not sit around in the back of Kroger or wherever else or on the show or on the shelf for weeks on end. It is shipped directly to your house. And it's not roasted until you order it. That's how you're ensuring you're getting the best premium coffee possible. Also, all of the all of the beans are fair trade certified in USDA organic. How else could you go wrong? What else do you want? Jared, I really I'd like to support a local company. Guess what? They're from Ohio. Gotcha. (laughs) Uh, Free shipping over $50. Subscribe and save uh, is also an option available to you. Uh, some of the flavors are available in K-Cup. So some of their more popular flavors available in K-Cup. And uh, if you have any additional concerns, any additional questions, uh, or if I've just piqued your curiosity, go ahead and head over to ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. Hello, YouTube. Hello. Sloop cats in our Discord. Hope everyone had a good weekend. It is officially August now, and we are just a few days away from fall camp. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I think that's I think it's all stuff we can handle during the actual show. For anyone who might be new to the show, because we def we last week's episode, actually the last two weeks of episodes, crossed over into like regular college football spaces on YouTube. And boy, did we did the comment sections get fun on those. Yes. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. <laughs> I love it. I've been in there fighting with them. It's the best. Um, Jared loves fighting on the Internet. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a passion of mine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go. Let's go and hop into it, Jared. OK. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well. How are you doing, Jared, today? Kyle, I'd like to uh, ask, or not ask, answer, answer a question uh, from one of our mods over in the Discord server, Nomad. He says, ask Sloop, hashtag ask Sloopcast. Is it official? Is this the season, season seven debut? And yes, happy anniversary, Kyle. We have now been doing the Sloopcast for a full six years, and we're now starting our seventh season of the Sloopcast. Uh, there's something to be said about just showing up. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky number seven. It's as we always said, um, especially towards the um, the first few years. Not so much lately, but the first few years. At the end of like almost every episode, what did we always say, Jared? Uh, we'll do better next time. And we'll do, next, frankly, we'll do better trying. next time. <laughs> quite frankly, we're still trying. Uh, <laughs> one day I uh, will quit interrupting Kyle so much, although really don't hold your breath on that one. And uh, we're getting better with better with uh, names. <laughs> trying to do better, uh, pronouncing <laughs> some names uh, again to varying levels of success. But yeah, this is a. Uh, Year seven, we are starting year seven. Uh, 
So what? I, I, happy anniversary. Yeah. It's, okay. As um as one of our um, swoop cats, uh, Z Spike says here, anchors up, Jared. Say it was out full. Should I do it? Should I do it for the old timers? Should I do it for the old Let's timers? Start season seven. Should I do it for the old timers, Kyle? Sure. Sun card's going to be so happy when he hears this. <laughs> Anchors up. up. Sales at full. full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? I had, I had to do the whole thing. Nostalgia. You actually have to answer. You actually have to answer. <laughs> I just, once I start the thing, I have to keep doing the thing. <laughs> All right. Let's, let's get right in wow. to it. Let's, let's go <laughs> we're, we're past right into it territory, Kyle. As several people have pointed out to me in the angry YouTube sections, you take too long to get to the actual shit. Shut up. It's a podcast. This is what we do here. <laughs> There's All a right, fast uh, forward button if you don't fucking like it. <laughs> so I, th I think we have some with, I think we have some news here. Uh, just a, just a tidbit of news before we get to the main part of our. Um, of our show and that is basketball related what we're opening the show with basketball god yeah i know we're we're, we're gonna kill or we're 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 gonna kill the we're gonna kill the ratings kyle <laughs> uh well disappointing news with um the carmen's crew um losing their their second game i think it was the round of, second round i think it was second or third round they they lost their, they were up by quite a bit and just yeah. could not hold on to, to win it there. And I think this is, this is officially the end for two well-known Buckeyes. I think this is, this is it for them. Uh, John Diebler and Dr. Aaron Kraft. Yeah. Aaron Kraft said that last time too. So we'll see. <laughs> yeah. Any more basketball news, Kyle? Um, I'm drawing a blank on his name, but we had a, I believe we had a commitment, didn't we? Yeah, we sure did. I don't know why you didn't put it in the show notes. I don't Kyle. either. Here we go. I apologize. <laughs> oh, uh, Felix. I just said we're trying to get better. Just said we're trying to get better at pronouncing names. Now I'm going to blow this. Felix. Uh, mm, Okpara? No, Okpara. Okpara, O K P A R A R A, <laughs> can't spell either. Uh, uh, yep, Kyle, um, he's he's a limping, native um, Nigerian who's um, committed to Ohio State earlier last week. Here's a um, big center, six eleven, two ten pound um, recruit, um, a top fifty recruit as well, and this is a much needed. Uh, position that Ohio State was looking for. Yeah, uh, it's certainly been an issue past couple of years having a big big guy up in the middle, having a true center because you know struggling with a lot of Big Ten teams who have a lot of big guys in the middle, a lot of true centers in the Big Ten, and Ohio State hasn't necessarily had the ability to match that. So yeah, getting a big guy in the middle is certainly a huge. Huge win for Ohio State. Um, I, don't, I don't know if he's going to be an immediate contributor, not in the way you necessarily want him to be, but still, we're we're moving towards we're moving towards something uh, with this acquisition for the Buckeye basketball team. But Kyle, we're going to start talking about some football now. Yeah, let's uh, let's I, take a look. Let's take a look at the Big Ten as a whole. Well, before we do that, um, because okay. I'm sure this is going to change here. It could change. It could not. We'll see. But the big talk, big talk here in these past few days, Quinn Ewers, Quinn Ewers yeah. may may or may not be joining Ohio State as early as this week. Um, a lot, lot of things, a lot of things still need to happen with Ewers when it comes to his last credit that he has to achieve to graduate from high school, and other stuff too. But may or may not we could see Quinn Ewers as early as this week. Yeah. Um I, I am leaning towards not. That's that's sort of where I'm leaning. I'm leaning towards not. Um but it, it is certainly still a possibility. Um I as far as like is this good for Ohio State or not? Well uh yeah it is because 
You're talking about generational quarterback and you're absolutely assuring that he's a Buckeye. Not that I feel like he's a flip concern because I don't, but you're absolutely assuring he's going to be a Buckeye and you're getting him underneath the tutelage of Ryan Day and the rest of the staff that much sooner. And that that's a win. Mm -hmm. And as far as recruiting goes, you acquire as much talent as you can and you get them on campus as soon as you can. That that's how recruiting works. So, yeah, absolutely. Bring him in um, and like just just trust. Oh, what what about what if so and so transfers? What about this recruit? What about that recruit? You figure it out. Like mm -hmm. what happens if Tate Martell doesn't turn out to be the best quarterback you think as good a quarterback as you think he's going to be? Uh, well, then you go out and you get Justin Fields. You know what I mean? Like you're Ohio State, you can figure it out. So yeah, bring as much talent in as uh, as much as you can, as soon as you can. And you figure mm -hmm. everything else out later. It's And it'll be okay. Yep. Uh, speaking of recruits, and then we'll get into our, into our meat of our episode here, but Jaheim Singletary yep. does not appear to be a we'll Buckeye here. We'll see. Yeah. He, uh, he's supposed to be announcing something on Sunday as uh, we're recording this in the afternoon on Sunday. Uh, he's not, he's not said anything official yet, although he might be. Um, he took Ohio state stuff out of his profile after visiting Miami. So that's not a great sign. Um, I'm not, I'm not willing to call him gone yet, but it's, it when when someone takes the Ohio state or wherever they're currently committed to stuff out of their, out of their social media bios and stuff like that. That's, it's not a great sign. Um, that being said, maybe he's just, maybe he's just trying to stir some drama up. Maybe he's just trying to get some attention for himself and it's, it's, it's fine. Ultimately he either comes here or he doesn't. And again, you just get as much talent as you in Singletary is a special guy. You want him on the team. And if you lose him, that's a, that's a huge loss. It's a big loss, but you move on and you go get, you go get the next guy. Yep. Absolutely. All right. Meat of our episode here. We're going to do our big 10 preview for the 2021 season. Yeah. Um, we are uh, working off of the preview put out by uh, the guys over at Pick Six Previews. Um, so that's a lot of, you know, so we'll be going through like preseason rankings, preseason predictions, um, preseason all this, all that teams. Uh, so just to source it all right up front, this is from the Pick Six Preview. Um, season preview guide. So that that's where, just so I don't have to keep saying per pick six previews per six, picks, blah, 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 blah. That's, that's where all of this is coming from. Unless I say otherwise. All right. Where do you want to start here, Jared? Um, you just want to start with their top, their top teams here. Sure. Uh, they have, they listed their top 66 teams, which I believe are basically all of the, uh, power all, five. Thank you. All of the power five teams and ranked them from first to last. And out of this list, Ohio state is number three behind Oklahoma and Georgia. I, I appreciate what pick six previews is, is doing here. Um, I believe that the top three teams are in rotating order, depending upon the season, Bama Clemson, Ohio state, and I believe that's the case until it is proven to me otherwise. Yep. Uh, that that is how I choose to to live my life. Um, I should probably point out that they did predict the playoff, and they predicted the playoff with Oklahoma with the number one seed, Georgia with the number two seed, Ohio State with the number three seed, and North Carolina with the number four seed, and. I honestly just, I don't see it. That's, that's just, I, I get that they're trying to do something different and I, I get it. I really do. I get it. I get it. I get it. But it's Bama, Clemson, Ohio state, and someone else until it's not in my mind. And I know that's not an exciting answer. In fact, it's probably a pretty boring answer, but that's, that's just how I'm rolling for now. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's I I keep seeing North Carolina as a as the team that a lot of people are not a lot, but seeing some people pick in coming out of the ACC there. But I agree with what Jared said here. It's Clemson until someone can finally knock off Clemson in that in that um, conference. Right. And, and I get it. They have maybe the best retor- returning quarterback in the country in Sam Howe. I get it. College football, when in doubt, pick the quarterback. You've heard me say it a thousand times on this show if you've been listening for a while. When in doubt, pick the quarterback. Mm-hmm. But to hear, I don't I don't have much doubt is is the problem here. And I, I think Uyunglele is a good quarterback at Clemson. Is he the best quarterback? Is he the top three quarterbacks that they've had in the past 10 years? Maybe not. But I still think he's very, very good. And Clemson as a whole recruits a lot better than North Carolina. I'll believe it when I say it. Um, but yeah, they have the best quarterback, at least best quarterback who we've seen a uh, best returning starting quarterback. Let me say it that way. I do think North Carolina is the best returning starting quarterback. Yes. I know this is supposed to be a big 10 preview, but you start here and you work your way down. All right. Um, but probably the best returning starting quarterback in the country this year. And I think that's worth a lot in college football. And I think North Carolina can compete with Clemson, but it's Clemson until it's not. And that's just, that's how I choose to live my life. Yep. All right. Um, looking at the rest of the big 10 here, um, Jared mentioned Ohio state third, the next big 10 team in the, in the uh, pick six rankings here is Wisconsin at 13. Yikes. And then Iowa at 15, Penn State at 20, Indiana at 25, Nebraska at 36, Minnesota, Michigan 37, 38, Northwestern at 42, Purdue 46, Michigan State at 53, Rutgers 56, and then Illinois and Maryland at 60 and 61. Okay, so overrated underrated you want to you want to toss out any you look at those numbers anyone there either overrated or underrated per your opinion to be honest like i really i really don't see an issue with like the top four there maybe even top five of the big 10 teams there Ohio state wisconsin iowa penn state indiana i honestly don't have any issues with those rankings there nebraska I think that might be a little too high. I don't really see what's changed or how they can be better than they than they are right there. It's slightly um, Minnesota, too high, Minnesota, but I, I don't think. I it's think Minnesota might be a little under, but I know they lost a lot of talent, so that might be why that might be why their ranks so low. But man, when you got when you got um, when you got uh, Muhammad Ibrahim as your running back there, and projected to be one of the best running backs in the country. I don't know. I, I think Minnesota might be a little, little underrated there. I think they have a fairly good returning offensive line group as well. Um, so, you know, I'm not saying it's an amazing, but it's it's a very good returning offensive line in Minnesota. Um, mm-hmm. I just don't necessarily know. You know, are are they coming? Is that good enough in modern college football? Is it good enough in modern college football to have a really good, I have a pretty good, a pretty, pretty good offensive line and a really good running back in modern college football. Is that good enough? And, you know, if, if the conversation is that enough to be number 37, yeah, it is. But yeah, I agree with you. I think Nebraska is slightly, but only slightly too high. Minnesota could, I would think, could probably be a tad bit higher. I think Rutgers could be a tad bit higher. Yeah, I I thought Rutgers could be a little bit higher, too. Again, maybe we'll talk about this in a year or two, but Rutgers recruiting is a lot better right now. Um, Man, how far Maryland has fallen. Like like looking here, way down at 61. Like Maryland... For a while, I was like, oh, Maryland's going to have this really good offense with the new head coach there. Um, I'm drawing a blank on his name, so I apologize. Um, the 
the guy from um that came from Alabama to coach Maryland. Yeah, yeah. And to see him at the bottom there, hmm, that's that doesn't bode too well. Illinois is the worst team in the Big Ten until yes. until someone tells me otherwise. Much like yeah. our Clemson conversation, but in reverse. Uh Maryland, I think, is also very slightly uh underrated as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So kind of moving ahead here a little bit since we're staying with the Big Ten. I don't want to try to stay in order what we had here, but ranking wise here, what the pick six previews had here in each um, division here in the West, they have Wisconsin and Iowa as your top two. Then they have tied Nebraska, Minnesota at third and then Northwestern Purdue and Illinois at the bottom part of the, the big Northwest division. And I, I agree with that. I don't know. I don't have a strong feeling about Iowa, to be honest with you. Who would you put in replace of that, though? Probably Minnesota. I feel, Kyle, is it time to, is it finally time to row the damn boat? No. Okay. No. You just really took the winds out of my sails on that one, which is fine because <laughs> I was going to row the boat. But yeah. Yeah. I don't know, Kyle. Maybe it's time to row that boat. All right. Well, I don't agree. I, I, honestly, I honestly don't have a problem with this. Uh, Northwestern, I hmm, I don't know. I, I feel like Northwestern, and well, I think we'll get into this a little bit more. I just I just don't have a good feel about Northwestern this year. I, I believe, and I'm trying to quickly scroll through here. I think I thought they, they're losing quite a bit here from, from last year, uh, especially on the defense. Yeah. Yeah, on offense, they lost a lot of um, uh, production compared to last year. So they have a lot of shoes to fill on their offensive side and defensive side, too. So they got a lot to replace. So maybe Northwestern, I know um, that Nomad in our Discord saying Northwestern needs to be moved up. I don't know. I, I might agree. Maybe that fourth or fifth spot might be right for them just because of who they lost. Yeah. North, Northwestern, I think, is a very good team. Sometimes they they cycle up and they cycle down because they can't simply replace talent the way Ohio State does. And I think this is just going to be a down cycle for them. And that's fine. That's who Northwestern is. They have their up cycles. They have their down cycles. I think this year is just a down cycle and they'll be back. Yep. All right. And then in the East, they have Ohio State one, Penn State two, Indiana three, Michigan four. Sparty five, Rutgers six, and Maryland seven. Kyle, I I honestly, I honestly think this is right. Maybe just swap Rutgers and Michigan State yeah, there over. Go. There you go. There you go. And and then and then you're right there. I also think Indiana can. I think Indiana can challenge Penn State as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I could see that too. But I, I think they, I would have. I w- I agree with you. I would have put Rutgers above Michigan State. But if ties are an option and we have a tie over in third place, so we know ties are an option, I feel like I would have tied Penn State and Indiana. Yeah. Arguably the best returning quarterback in the conference. And yeah, I, I the word returning is key there. And I think, again, much like Sam Howe, I think that's worth something. Is Michael yep. Penix the next coming of Justin Fields? No, he's not. By the end of the year, does it prove that CJ Stroud is actually a better quarterback? Yeah, I'm sure that happens. But he's the best returning quarterback in the league right now. And I think, and like I said, I think that's worth something. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, you, Indiana is going to be really, really interesting to watch this year. They, they have one of um, the best, well, production-wise, they return the vast majority of their players um, that very significant on their offense there and defense too. Wow. Yeah, they, they, they got a lot of players returning. So, yeah, uh, definitely watch out for Indiana. They can well, definitely be right there on that cusp of my passing Penn State here and getting that number two spot in the in the big Northeast. My problem with Indiana is that they're weak in the trenches on both sides. I don't have a ton of faith in their offensive line or their defensive line, which is probably why you, which is probably why the guys ever pick six previews gives Penn state that bit of a nod because Penn state is 
uh, or at least I think will, in fact, prove to be better in the trenches. Um, yep. Ultimately, that's what matters in my mind. Um, and also probably why maybe Rutgers and Maryland are a bit low. Rutgers and Maryland have been making some really good moves in the skill position areas, but in the places like offensive and defensive line where it, you know, it takes, it takes a few more years to sort of recruit, develop, grow offensive and defensive line. Sometimes um, you do see Rutgers, Maryland, fall uh, you know maybe not quite caught up in that area yet which is again maybe why michigan state gets a bit of a nod over them but i i i I don't know i just really dislike michigan state yep no i you could probably put michigan state maybe in that last spot too but i think it's going to be a fight with maryland and and sparty that last last week there um yeah no nomad brings up a good point um the first five games there could possibly see them as only a two to three um, win team as their schedule for the first five games is at Iowa. They play Idaho, Cincinnati, Western Kentucky, and uh, Penn state. We'll find out a lot about Indiana and in, in, uh, right before their bye week. All right. I think we're, we're going to look at those schedules and we're going to, we're going to do some overs, some overs and unders, and we're going to, we're going to look at that. Um, but I think Kyle, let's let's maybe hit an early ad break, and then we're gonna look at some All American teams. What do you think about that? Yeah, sure. Do you wanna you wanna start us off, or do you want me to tell you a little bit about? I'll tell you about the Iron, Iron Bean, Bean Coffee Company. I, I've been talking a little bit about some flavored coffees as of late. So let's let's talk about some of the uh, non flavored coffees. Let's look at some medium roast. Uh, there's the Ride or Die. There's the Rage Against the Dying of the Light. Those are both amazing. And then there's the cast iron um, and then uh, sort of a medium coffee, the Thor. Um, And then you have the Rocco, which is available in a dark or a medium roast. Um, The ride or die, I I think is is I'm going to say it's one of my favorite coffees, but I'm also probably going to say that a couple times. So uh, give me a little bit of leeway here. Ride or die, it's a gentle, distinctive version of the classic American breakfast cup. Uh, Brazilian yellow bourbon beans, superb smoothness and flavor. Um, The Rage Against the Dying of the Light has notes of cherry and milk chocolate. Um, Medium body with a long finish. Uh, Then there's the cast iron, which is a medium roast with 100% single origin Honduran Arabica beans. and then I said, uh, there's also the Rocco, which is available in medium or dark. Um, but this is a unique Ethiopian natural. Um, it's really for people who enjoy coffees that insist on being noticed. And then there's the Thor, which is, it's not necessarily a medium roast, but it's also not a dark roast. It's somewhere in between the two. Um, thunder and lightning will course through your veins, because of course it will, because it's the Thor. But all of these coffees and many, many more, including some flavored coffees and some dark roast coffees and one or two lighter roast coffees, uh, all of those can be found over at ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. This episode is also brought to you by our good friends over at the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Don't let that name fool you. Mad Canadian is an Ohio-based company in Northwest Ohio. Um, mentioned some of the great seasons they had at the top of the show. Um, Mad Canadian has a food truck for those who aren't aware. Uh, they have a food truck that goes um, mainly around the Northwest Ohio, sometimes in the Northern part of Ohio, uh, but they will be staying close to home, actually at home uh, this weekend as part of the Cary business expo. Um, the, there is a Cary fest happening on August 6th and 7th this weekend. So if you're in the Finley area, why don't you head on over to that Cary Fest and, and look for that Mad Canadian bus there and get yourself some good old good old barbecue over there. Um, they have some, they use all of their spices in their meats for anything that you purchase there. Uh, just overall, just great food. My parents have gone there a number of times. They'll go back again. It's it's obvious, it's uh, obviously really really good food. Um, once their website is back up, um, 
which they should be back up here, hopefully sometime soon here as they as Mike Kennedy took a little bit of a break. Um, check out all the seasons you can over at the Mike Kennedy and barbecue company, excuse me, the Mike Kennedy BBQ.com and use that promo code sleepcast 10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order. The Mike Kennedy barbecue company where they have your butt covered. You know, Kyle, speaking of uh, having some randos in the comment sections last week, I had someone try and tell me that I, we shouldn't spice our barbecue. He's just throwing the meat in there, nothing on it. Ooh. Yeah, I what? exactly, Z Spikes. Who, what? Who the hell does that? What? G- good barbecue doesn't need spices. You aren't invited. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can stay home all right jared let's hop back into it here so going back to the um pick six preview rankings here so looking at some of their first second third and fourth teams here uh both offense and defense here gonna gonna name some names off of the big 10 that's in that's in each of the teams here so starting off with the first team offense uh, the offense, quite a few, defense. quite a few Big Ten teams here. Quite a few. Yeah. Uh, starting off with mention him once already, uh, Muhammad Ibrahim in Minnesota as your first team preseason running back. And then also in here, you got wide receiver one A and wide receiver one B for Ohio State Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave. Uh, you have offensive lineman Tyler Linderbaum in Iowa. And also our good old Thayer Munford as well. Yeah, uh, first team defense includes Haskell Garrett of Ohio State, obviously. Um, Makai McFadden uh, from Indiana and Taiwan Mullen also from Indiana, uh, linebacker and defensive back. um, Respectively, that was the word I was looking for. Uh, so, yeah, uh, Indiana making a, a good showing for themselves on the defensive side of the ball, f- getting two guys on the all on the uh, all American first team defense. Yeah, no, absolutely. And then to finish it off here, second team, uh, Ohio State has um, Nicholas Petit for second team offensive lineman, uh, third team wide receiver David Bell from Purdue tight end. Jake Ferguson from Wisconsin and wide receiver Ty Fry, uh, Fry Fogel, <laughs> wide receiver in Indiana and fourth team overall. And yes, Nomad, I agree. Where is our good old tight end at? Not even in in um, either the first, second, third, or fourth teams here from pick six that's, preview. That's a, that's a crime. That is. That's a crime. Uh, it was so high state's fault for not throwing to him more often, but a crime nonetheless. Uh, on the defensive side of the ball, um, defensive lineman from Purdue makes second team. Um, George Karlaftis. I, I, you, you can tell me I'm wrong on that one. New guys, new rule. It's a new rule, but it's now an old rule. You can't just tell me I said a name wrong. You have to tell me how to pronounce it. That's the rule. If you tell me I pronounced it wrong, you have to then follow up with a phonetic spelling of how to say it correctly. We must learn together. No Big Ten players make the third team defense, but three team or three players make the fourth team. Uh, Jake Hansen from Illinois, Jack Sanborn, linebacker from Wisconsin, um, and defensive back Cam Tyler Britt from Nebraska make the fourth team defense. So really no surprise here. You're only seeing one defensive um, player from Ohio state making first, second, third, or fourth team here. There's a, there's a, there's a, there's a lot to be proven from this defense, especially from what we saw last year. So no surprise to see very little showing here. Well, also a team that didn't perform well, but also a, a huge amount of turnover, a lot of turnover from last year's Buckeye defense. So, like, who's the star returning? Who's the returning star from last year's defense? Other than Haskell Garrett, of course. We've already. Other than Haskell. We already talked about Haskell Garrett, Nomad. Other than Haskell Garrett. 
Seven Banks, sure. Uh, was he serviceable last year? Yes. Was he a star, though? I think he'll be a star this year. But was he a star last year? I, cause I don't think he was. Um, you know, I, I expect a lot of things from guys stepping up this year. I expect a lot from Zachary Harrison coming up this year, but does he deserve to be on any of these lists based off of past performances? No. Um, so it's not, yeah, like Kyle said, not a huge surprise for a lack of Buckeyes showing up on the all, uh, all American defense. Um, but you know, a decent showing on the offense, placing three people in the first team, getting your second offensive tackle in the second team. Nothing wrong with any of that, especially the, the considering team. how much production they lost on the offense. You lose your quarterback, you lose your, uh, most productive running back. Uh, so yeah, considering everything they lost, it's, it's fairly, am I, uh, Mamad, am I correct? Hearing not a single, no, no, not a single Michigan player, uh, nor a single Penn state player mentioned in, in, in those all American teams. Heck, even Illinois had one showing in here. Yeah, good job, Illinois. Like, I'm not even trying. I don't even want to be condescending here. Just good job. That's it. We're just, we're, that's just, that's just me being sincere. Good job, Illinois. <laughs> All right. Where, where do you want to, where do you want to uh, go off next here, Jared? Do you uh, want st- to stick, stick with the same program and just go with um, Big Ten? um yeah. offense and defensive or yeah yeah let's let, let's just do the first team and second team big 10 um first team second team big 10 quarterback michael Penix gets first team quarterback um olave and wilson of course get the wide receiver spots of course they they got all american of course they got all big 10 and munford and uh free get two of the spots along the offensive line Um, CJ Stroud does get second team quarterback, which is impressive considering he's never started a game or is that, is that impressive for Ohio state and CJ Stroud, or is that a knock against the rest of the conference and their quarterback play? Uh, you could say the same thing with second team Travion Henderson being on here as well. Okay. See, now we need to have a conversation about, oh man, really? I that is that is maybe bold, maybe ridiculous, but maybe right. <laughs> they seriously now it should be noted that they do two running backs per team. So that's probably like them saying he's the fourth running back, not the second running back. Mm-hmm. But still, he's a true freshman. But I still got an issue with this, Jared. What's that? The tight ends here. Uh huh. Where is our tight end at? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) No mad. uh, If you are mad. If you're mad that Rucker didn't make the uh, all American tight end list. No, he's not playing in the slot. I hate the break. (laughs) (laughs) All right, and then def- defensively here, um, Pascal Garrett making first team, as well as Seven Banks. Yep. And then second second team, you got Zach Harrison, and that's it. So you got those three players for your first and second team for, um, for Big Ten. Yeah. Um, let's just go through the entire first team. Uh, Michael Penix. Mohamed Ibrahim, Tyler Goodson, uh, Wilson Olave, uh, David Bell uh, is the third wide receiver from Purdue. Jake Ferguson gets first team tight end from Wisconsin. Uh, Linderbaum, Munford, Teep Faree, um, offensive lineman, and, and as well as Rashid Walker from Penn State and Logan Bross from Wisconsin. Uh, defensive line: Pascal Garrett, George. Karloftis from Purdue, um, Adian Hutchinson from Michigan, Zach Vandenberg from Iowa, uh, Makai McFadden, linebacker, Indiana, 
uh, Sanborn and Hanson, linebackers from Wisconsin, Illinois. Um, defensive backs, uh, Taiwan Mullen from Indiana. Uh, Brandon Joseph, Northwestern. Cam Tyler Britt was or, um, Nebraska, and then of course Seven Banks. Uh, we have an LOL Hutchinson. LOL Hutchinson. Gangland doesn't even want one Michigan player on the board. <laughs> doesn't even want one. He's he's gonna throw some shade, and and quite frankly, I'm here for it. It's fine. Yeah. All right. So that so that's all the all mayor preseason all American and Big Ten um respectfully here so now jared big 10 win totals and projections yeah for this year yeah uh this is not this is not from pick six preview this is from bet 365 bet 365 all right bet 365 kyle uh I'm going to, I'm going to, they, they give final predictions here. I'm going to turn these into over unders for the sake of my fun. So I'm going to say Ohio state. uh, We're talking regular season here, Mm -hmm. regular season over under 11 and a half wins. I'd go with over. Got to go go over. over. Got to go over. Yep. Wisconsin over under nine and a half wins. Ooh. I got I got to go with um, looking at their schedule real quick here. Sorry, scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. All right. So they have here Penn State, Eastern Michigan, Notre Dame, which is going to be played in Chicago. That's tough. Michigan, Illinois, Army, Purdue, Iowa, Rutgers, Northwestern, Nebraska and Minnesota. They got Army in the middle of their schedule there, Jared. Not fun. <laughs> Not fun. So you said you said um, nine and a half games. Yeah. So that essentially gives them room for two losses. Hmm. I, you know, I'll go with I'll go with over. I'll go with over. I. Yeah. yeah essentially, that, that's, that's, that's are a, you that's going a, with that's ten a, and two that's or a great, nine and three? That's a, that's a great number there. But I, I think I'll go with over just because I don't really like anybody else in that division there so i'll go with over i do think they're clearly the best in the division i think they lose to notre dame and i think they probably drop another big 10 game along the way and finish 10 and 2 therefore i'm gonna go over indiana kyle over under eight and a half wins one less than wisconsin eight and a half and i think i already said their schedule once already I think I'm going to go under. I think I'll go under. I think, I don't know. This is supposed to be a really good Indiana team, but man, they got, they got a tough schedule. I mean, they get to play Luke Fickle's team in September here. And not to mention going to Penn state and then playing Ohio state playing Michigan. I, hmm. uh, they're you know, you know, I'll go over. actually, I'll go over. I'll go over because I, I think those are, might be their <laughs> their three losses there. It's probably Penn State, Ohio State, and then finding a third loss there, whether it could be at Iowa, maybe at Michigan. Yeah, I, I'll, uh, I'll actually go over. I'll they, go, they, I'll, they're, I'll go also, they're also hosting Minnesota second to last game of the year. That's a potential loss as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll go over. I'll go over. Uh, I, yeah, I like him at nine and three. I like him at nine and three. Mm-hmm. So yeah, go over. Um, Iowa also will go with eight and a half over under. Iowa, 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 Indiana, Iowa State, Kent State, Colorado State. I'm going under here for the record. Maryland, Penn State, Purdue, Wisconsin, Northwestern, Minnesota, Illinois, Nebraska. I'm going to go under. Yeah, I, I don't. I just don't have a ton of faith in Iowa right now. Mm-mm. I got it. They got Iowa State, which I think they'll they'll lose. I think Iowa State's a good is a very good team this year. I think they'll lose to Iowa State. They got they got easier games with Kent State and Colorado State, but yeah, I yeah, I, I think they'll just miss that projection there. I think they'll win eight games, but 
So I'll go under. All right, Kyle. Uh, Michigan, seven and a half. Seven and a half. <laughs> under. Under. We're going under. We that's, are that, going. That's my, ex, that's my expert analysis here. I could barely hear that, by the way. So <laughs> that's fine. Um, Western Michigan, Washington, Northern Illinois, Rutgers, Wisconsin, Nebraska. I'm sorry. Are you still talking about Michigan? I already gave my expert analysis on this. All right. Did you hear that? One? <laughs> uh, yeah, I go under. I go under. I just do not trust anything that comes out from them this year. And yeah, it's not good. Not good. All right. Northwestern, Jared, on the other hand, Northwestern, seven and a half. Uh, I got to go under here. They're just missing a lot of talent. That's, uh, mm -hmm. I don't think they have, I, I don't know what the hell's happening for them at quarterback. There, I just, I don't know where their points come from. Their offensive line is going to be a mess. I have no idea what's happening for them from a wide receiver perspective, from a quarterback perspective. Um, I think their defense should be decent enough, but I just, I, I don't think their defense is going to be exceptional. I think it's going to be a middle yeah, I, I agree, big, I, big 10 I, defense, yeah, but I just I, don't I, know where their points come from. Yeah, I agree. Uh, pick, pick six preview says here, one of their last sentences in, um, in their preview for Northwestern Quote, they are ranked dead last in power five in returning production, meaning this year falls into the quote rebuild category. Yeah. Uh, no, Matt says they will lose one of either at Duke or Ohio. At least let's, 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 let's slow at down a little bit. But here's the thing that's not totally ridiculous either. I just, I just don't know where their points come from. Yep. All right, Penn State, seven and a half wins. I think I'm going to go over um, yeah. primarily because I like Rutgers, but they're a year or two away. I like Maryland, but they're a year or two away. They're not good enough this year to compete with Ohio State. I don't think they're going. I, I, I think they're about tied with Indiana, and we already gave Indiana um, a pretty big compliment. I mean, they, we had their over under at eight and a half. They're only one game less. Maybe the game with Indiana and Penn State helps define that differential. Um, but I, I'm going to go with over here. Uh, I There's nothing spectacular about Penn State, I don't think. But I also don't think there's anything wrong with Penn State. Does that make sense? I think that they're kind of a a solid third or fourth place team in the big 10 this year. So, you know, what's really funny about Penn state here. I'm looking at their schedule, their first six games at Wisconsin home to ball state, Auburn, Villanova, Indiana, and at Iowa, they could start off three and three. They could, they could start off three and three before they have their bye week and they'd still get to that eight and four prediction projection here. So yeah, I'll go with over. I think even after they, their bye week, they'd lose one game on the road to Columbus and they could win their other games, Illinois, Maryland, Michigan, Rutgers, Michigan state, and get to eight and four. So yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I think, I think over, and I feel pretty confident about that. Okay, Kyle, uh, we have Minnesota over under five and a half wins. Ooh, I'm going to go with under, I'll go with under. Ooh. I just, I'm just not, I'm just not really? confident with like what, with, with just um oh i'm sorry yeah you said you said minnesota right sorry i was i was thinking, i was looking at maryland <laughs> oh okay you you had me thrown i thought that was i am easy sorry over. i, I am thought sorry that was easy over <laughs> i was real confused look, whew, whew, minnesota at five and a half wins oh i here, here I know, I, you, you want me to go first yeah i, I want you to go first because i'm I'm, I'm ready to row the boat here. Now, are they going to be good enough to compete against Wisconsin this year? No, I, do, I, do, I do not believe that they are. But I think that they can. 
I believe, surpass both Iowa and Nebraska and be the number two team in the Big Ten. They have problems on the defensive side of the ball this year. I, I think that's pretty obvious. Um, they have problems in the wide receiver core. I think that's pretty obvious. But I think they have a solid quarterback. They have a very solid offensive line. And I think inarguably the best returning running back in the Big Ten this year. Yeah. And again, I, if, I, they, if they can figure out how to be at least somewhat good with their current wide receiver core, then I think they could potentially get into some shootouts and make out or make out, make up for some of their deficiencies on the defensive side of the ball. Mm. Um, I guess I'll go. I guess I'll go over here. If it's five and a half, they, they are returning a lot, like a lot of their um, production on the defensive side, but that's, it's not it could be good or bad depending on how you look at it. De- rush defensive wise, they were pretty much almost dead last in every category there. <laughs> uh, but I mean, when you got schedule like you're playing Miami, Ohio, at Colorado, it could be interesting. Bowling Green, then you're also playing um, Maryland and Northwestern and Illinois. Yeah, I, I could see I could see them getting to six wins here. So I'll, I'll go over. All right, Kyle, let's let's do these last group. A little bit fast. All right. Uh, Nebraska, same. Over under five and a half. I, I think I'll go. Mm. <laughs> I'll go. I'll go under. I'll go under here. I'll go under. Like they, they got. They got some. They got some tough games here, including Oklahoma, Ohio State. Uh, yeah, they. Yeah, it's in Wisconsin there too. Yeah, I'll, I'll go with under. I just yeah, they're they're just kind of a below average Big Ten team this year, pretty solidly across the board. Nothing, nothing great, nothing spectacular, like kind of just a below average team this year. So uh, I, I think six and six is probably about right for them. So I might say over just because I think they can hit six and six, but I don't feel great about it. Mm hmm. All right, Maryland here, uh, four and a half games. Um, offensive line's a mess. The, I don't know. It, I, I, it's, it's hard. It's hard to feel too hopeful. Honestly, the defense is a mess. The offensive line's a mess. Uh, they should be pretty decent in the passing game, but I think that's about it. Um, uh, no, Nomad brings up a good question. Do they play Texas this year? <laughs> they do not. <laughs> they play West Virginia this year. They do. They're, they're, they open it up with West Virginia. Play Howard, Jared. They play Howard as well as Kent State. And I think I think before their bye week, after they um, they get to Ohio State, I think they'll only have like two wins before they go to the bye week and then them trying to find another three wins to get above four and a half. Nah, I'm not seeing it. I'll go under. Yeah, I, I probably agree. I, I I like Maryland's direction. I just don't think it's it's there yet. Michigan State four and a half wins. Um, under. I'm, I'm under. Call under. Under. Yeah, I I just I don't see what is there to be optimistic. Um, they got one win against Western Kentucky. I think their defensive line will be not embarrassing. Yeah. And they play Youngstown State. There's two wins. Hey, there you go. But yeah, that that's, might be it. Yeah, that's that's maybe it. They they do play. They do go to Florida and play Miami. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, no, two. Yeah, I'll go under, under, under Purdue four and, and a half, half wins. Purdue, Purdue, same um, Purdue and Rutgers. We'll just kind of combine the Purdue and Rutgers four and a half. Yeah, let's combine them. Uh, I think I, I'll go. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll agree with Nomad here. I think I'll go over. I think I'll go over with both of them there. Yeah, I think, I think, I think um, like right, right at over. Mm-hmm. Illinois. It, it really, three it, and it half really depends. It really depends for for Purdue's sake. It really depends on. <laughs> their first three games is really interesting. All three of their. Um, if they're out of conference games are all against power five teams, Oregon state, UConn and Notre Dame. <laughs> hey, it's better. It's better than like playing 
uh, who, who was it there playing Howard yeah. or Youngstown State there? Yes, UConn football. <laughs> yes, UConn football. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think I think they can get over there. I mean, yeah. they they play Illinois. Uh, I think they'll beat. I think they have a chance to beat Minnesota there. Um, they play Sparty, and yeah, I I think I think they can get over. I think they can get to that five wins there. And Rutgers, on the other hand, we 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 talked about Rutgers too. Um, maybe even fighting to maybe even be passing Michigan state and maybe even Michigan. I just don't have a lot of conferences with Michigan this year. So uh, I, I think Rutgers will step in the right direction this year. I don't, I don't know about that one, but yeah, I'll go over. Okay. And then the last one here, Illinois under at three and a half under under. I'm just going to keep even saying know who, under. I don't even know who they play, but we're, we're going to go under. Yeah. I think. I mean, they got they got a they you they got a player on the on the All American fourth team. So good job, Illinois. Mm-hmm. I see two wins. I see two wins before the middle of October. Do you see any? Can you see any way to get two more? If Virginia's any good, the Virginia's the same mediocre ass Virginia they've been forever. Could they get could they get a win over Rutgers? Maybe. Maybe. Maybe a win it. over Northwestern. No. Maybe. There, there's two more right there. But I'll, I'll go with under. I'll go with under. Yeah. You're, you're going to have a team that has three or two wins this year. It's almost inevitable. You always have a Big Ten team with two or three wins. All right, Kyle, let's do some Ask Sloopcast questions. Let, then let's GTFO. All right. Um, Nomad asks us, should award watch list exist? For our sake, yes. <laughs> because that's something to talk about. <laughs> yeah, except we haven't. Except we haven't, Kyle. They've been coming out and we don't care. Like if it's not even being used for podcast fodder, what good are they? Yep, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, Jared. You're right. Um, this is from Kabuto. When you were each 18 years old, what would you have done with a million dollars? Um, maybe stayed in Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, but you, if you were 18, though. 18 and you have a million dollars dinosaur ribs for dinner that's thinking outside the box <laughs> i really don't know that like that's i'm my answer is probably going to be boring <laughs> but i i honestly probably do the same as what i would think right now is i would kind of just invest that and save that and make that money grow I, i'd be boring one word bitcoin <laughs> bitcoin <laughs> Uh, sorry for the lame answer, but that that's what I would have done. I'm a, I'm a boring, I'm a boring, I was a boring kid. <laughs> I can confirm. Uh, let's see. Which program has taken a bigger downfall, Michigan or Nebraska? A question from Nomad. Ooh. Um, In terms of recency, uh, I would go Michigan, but overall, I think, I think I would go with Nebraska then. I don't know. Because when's the last time Nebraska's been good? Mid 90s. When's the last time Michigan was good? Mid to late 90s. Well, they had like, what was it? Their their revenge tour. That was a good team. You, you, that you have was to admit, a that was good a good team. A good when, team. When was, when was the last time Nebraska had a good team? Uh, a single good Nebraska exactly. team. Exactly. Uh, no, I feel like they've they've had they um and uh, Sue's team when one of their last years in the Big Ten. Yeah, yeah. Uh, someone has my back down there. Gangland when Sue was there, basically ruined Texas's year by taking McCoy mm. out in the Big Twelve title game. 
they've had good teams. Okay. Yeah, I'll give you that. I'll give you that um, 2010 year there. Okay. But si- since they joined the Big Ten. <laughs> no, not since they've joined the Big Ten. Uh, oh, they did have one good year. Um, in 2012, they went 10 and 4. See, is that is that that much worse than the Revenge Tour team? I think they had a better record, but either way, um, I'll go. I'll go. I'll go with Nebraska as, as a whole. I think Nebraska's had a bigger downfall. Here's, I think there's less of an excuse for Michigan though. They have more money. They're in more fertile fertile recruiting territory. I don't know. It's. I'm going with Michigan. All right. Uh, um, what's our next question here, Jared? Uh, Kabuto asks if Craig Young wins the bullet position this year, what does it mean for the Ohio State defense? By the way, Stuart underscore E4 US vet answered this in the Ask Sloopcast section of our Discord server. It says it means they have a 6 3 220 bullet. And quite frankly, I really just want to see Ohio State finally embrace the bullet position, and I think Craig Young would be a great fill for that. Um, I don't know. I just I take it as a positive. Ohio State, that's sort of Ohio State embracing like a best 11 approach on the defense, and I'd be all for that. Uh, here's another good one for you. Buckeye Zach asks, is Illinois where head coaches go to let their careers die. Recent recently? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's it feels like a retirement job at this point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh Duncan from the Discord, how are the Ohio State Olympians doing? Well, Hunter Armstrong is a gold medalist in the four by one that happened, go. I believe, Saturday. There you go. Um, I, I've honestly been paying like little no attention to the Olympics this year. I just I've not been able to get into it. Sorry. Uh, this one from Nomad. Does the Big Ten try to pillage the Pac-12? If you listen to last week's episode, you know damn well that we do believe that is the case. Or prop it up and go after ACC teams to F E S P N. The ACC teams, I don't think, are realistic options. They're in a TV rights deal until 2035. Uh, ACC put up their walls big and tall after Ohio State raided them last time. And I, I don't see that. I don't see it changing. I don't see anyone leaving the ACC. I went into a lot of details on last week's episode as to why I think that's the case. Um, I know I've seen a lot of people pissed off at the idea that Ohio State would go to the Pac-12 to expand. And they say, go get Pitt, go get Florida State, go get. Guys, it's it's not happening. It's really not happening. Um, I hate to I I hate to break it to you. It's it's not realistic. I think Virginia and North Carolina would be great fits for many reasons, although Again, people are pissed off at that idea, especially Virginia, because Virginia is not very good at football and blah, 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 blah. I'm I'm not trying to. I'm telling you what the Big Ten presidents want. The Big Ten presidents and chancellors want a place that is academically great before they even consider athletics. Mainly research. It's all it's all rolled together. Um, the money comes from research, $10 billion generated by the big 10 every year in research money. Yep. If you aren't academically sound, the big 10 does not want you. I, 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 you can not like it. I cannot like it. We can all not like that. That's what the big Ten's doing, but that's what the big Ten's doing. And again, be mad about it, but there are universities with school. These are universities with football teams attached to them, not football teams with universities attached to them. They are universities first. 
And the Big Ten cares first and foremost about academics and research and research grants and patents and all of these things that generate actual money. Mm -hmm. Athletic money just funds more athletics. That's all athletics money does. Goes right back into the athletic department and that's about it. Research grants build buildings. <laughs> yes. Um, last bit of tidbit news here. Um, I'm not going to spoil it because it is behind paywall here, but a certain player that, that made the all Big Ten team that we kind of were joking around. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, it's a, okay. You've made it very obvious, but please continue. Um, they go in here and explain that this particular player has been um, one of the, the hardest workers over the summer. And so there might be, might be a little information on why this, this particular player got um, so-called Big Ten ranking or Big Ten. Um, um, Second team running back. Yeah. <laughs> Just say it. And there, there's, a, there's, a, there's a reason here. So if you want to know a little bit more information, um, check out the Buckeye Scoop. Um, ask the insider so you got to be a um, a member for that but some good information there guys henderson's gonna be great i'm i've not i'm not saying otherwise i think he ends up starting by the end of the year i'm not saying otherwise it just it feels a little bit much to put him again there's two running backs per team so they're actually saying fourth best running back and again he might be first team Or, you know, because there's two running back spots. He might be first team host season, Big Ten running back. It just felt like a bit much to put him in there. Mm -hmm. Anyway. All right. All right. That's it, Jared. I think that's the end of today's episode. Yeah, that that will be the end of today's episode. Um, Let's see. Want to encourage everyone to check out the sloopcast.com. All that is is a landing site filled with links. Yada, 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 yada. Kyle, what do you have in Kyle's Corner this week? Um, Something unrelated football, but kind of related football. Um, Madden, Madden NFL 22. Um, they're, Excuse me while I zone out. <laughs> <laughs> their, their rankings uh, just came out, and four, four, yeah, four Buckeyes have earned 90 or above rankings. They include Michael Thomas at 94, Joey Bosa and Cameron Hayward at 92, and Nick Bosa at 90, and yes, Gangland. Another year, another recycled game. Yes. I, 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 I When's the last time any of us have bought Madden? I'm, I'm, oh, I'm curious if anybody's... I, I know I haven't since probably... Oh, God. <laughs> no bad says 2020 <laughs> was that for um, you or for a kid oh, no. <laughs> played it twice god i want to say it it's got to be like 2016 or something I'm, i might actually have it in here it, it's a, it's an old one here i feel like 2016 might be generous yeah no i don't even have that so no it's it's got to be older than that it's older than 2016. Yeah, NCAA 14. Yes, that 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 sounds probably about right. <laughs> I can't wait for the next for the newest NCAA to come out. I so. can. I, I hate to break it to you, Kyle. It's it's still EA Sports. I don't know, I know. why. I, I don't know how we can hate on Madden and then be super excited for NCAA. It's it's this. It's going to be the same thing. I hate to break it to everybody. It's just. It's going to be the same thing. I'm sorry. I Do I have to be the one to tell everyone that? Do I have to be the asshole? Yes, Jared, you have to be. All right. I guess I'm the asshole. Uh, guys, it's, it's the same people. It's going to be the same mess. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, all I earned right, that, that one, gangland. Sorry. <laughs> all right. That's all I got in, um, in this episode here, Jared. Go ahead and take it away. All right. Um, I'm trying to well, just trying to find a band real quick to uh, go ahead and end the show on. Um, unless anyone down in the comment section wants to throw me a bone, you guys ain't got any Ohio artists you want me to play through today's. 
Someone? Anyone? A little bit of help? A little bit of help? All right, I'll do it myself. All right, uh, tonight's ending music will be from Ohio-based band Forest and the Evergreens, Michigan. Buck and I didn't even know you were in the chat, buddy. Hi, how you doing? <laughs> uh, this is from Forest. Oh, sorry, we're, we're just ending. Uh, this is from Forest and the Evergreens. Uh, that will be uh, ending today's show. Uh, so I guess with all of that being said, we'll go ahead and uh, encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Forest and the Evergreens. This is the part of the show where I just sort of zone out and mentally recalculate. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we're 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 getting close here. We're Wednesday. Wednesday is the um first day of practice here. So yeah, it'll be it'll be really fun turn? actually just seeing pictures and videos of of um of the players of Scarlet the players are practicing in. Are we getting the scarlet carpet return this year? I thought it already happened. Maybe I don't know. No. I saw I saw I saw the um, picture of um of um oh wow I can't believe I forget his name Mikalo Mikala. Oh well, that what? he's he's in the NFL now, buddy. No, his his brother, his younger brother, wearing the t shirt. No, I thought that was actually. Was that last year? No, I think he did that going to the NFL camp. Mm. Okay. Sorry. I, and then I just got distracted because I'm in the basement. I record this in, in a room in a basement. If that's not obvious to everybody, I got, I got a little tiny little basement window right here. There's a Cardinal mm -hmm. staring at me. <laughs> it's just this little tiny basement window. There's a little bush right there. And I just looked up and there's like a Cardinal staring at me. Is that a good sign? Is, is, is the, is the Cardinal a, um, a sleep cat because if not getting a getting a free episode Listen, early episode here kyle kyle you can't call a bird a cat that's offensive <laughs> that is that is their natural enemy all right let's go ahead and end the episode here <laughs> all right uh i want to once again thank um Forest and the Evergreens for spot or for ending today's show. And I want to thank the Iron Bean Coffee Company for sponsoring today's show. Kyle, I want to talk to you about the big shebang. What the hell's that? Uh, it's a thing offered by, oh, there's only four in stock. Y'all better hurry. Uh, it's called the whole shebang. Uh, it's a sampler pack from the Iron Bean Coffee Company. You can get this whole, whole bean or ground. Um, you essentially get a how many how many are there here um you it gets a uh you get two 2.5 ounce packets 12 two and a half ounce packets of coffee uh you get the fear no evil the fierce the integrity the drink of the skull of your enemy the odin the dark rocco the thor the medium rocco the ride or die the cast iron the rage against the dying of the light and the loki so if you hear me saying all of these different coffees and you're just not sure which one of the ones you want, and maybe you're just getting into coffee for the first time and you're just trying, I don't know if I like medium roast or light roast. And I don't know if I want an Arabica bean or a Ethiopian bean. I don't know what I want. Well, here we go. I have a solution for you. It's called the whole shebang. Uh, it's, a collection of their best unflavored coffees. These are your standard roast coffees. Um, it brews a total of 64 ounces of coffee. Like I said, it is 12, two and a half ounce sampler bags. Uh, you can find that at ironbeancoffee.com. Again, oh, by the way, also available whole bean or ground. Only four left in stock. You better hurry. Uh, Nomad says that he has a birthday coming up. Feel free to send some his way. Yeah, Nomad, just go ahead and drop your address down in the chat. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead and dox yourself down in the chat for everyone to see. And then maybe someone will do it. 
And uh, so, yeah, all that being, uh, nope, uh, I'm off. I'm completely off. Uh, Iron Me Coffee Company, America's local coffee roaster. This episode was also brought to you by our good friends over at the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Uh, mentioned a lot of the great seasonings at the top. Mentioned where you can catch him in his food truck at the middle of the episode. I'm going to tell you how you can save money purchasing some seasonings here. Now, you can go to your favorite restaurants, Jared, and get some decent, decent food for some overpriced um, prices. <laughs> um that sounds right, right? Uh, ah, sure. Or you can get some, or you can get, or you can buy your own meat from your local deli shop and just put some, put some great seasonings that the Mad Canadian has. Not sure what, not sure what season to get. Well, Mad Canadian has you covered with their box sets. Uh, they have the Just Send It, which is their overall just versatile seasoning. So probably a good good place to start their s and bud their salt and pepper blend the snore and heat give you that little bit of kick the cajun to get that little bit of a southwest style um uh taste to it or the smoked to give it that smoky flavor of course uh you can do the sweet heat mix which is your which is your um i call it your chicken wing set it has a little bit of spicy a little bit of sweetness to it four horsemen discord two border and old fashioned in it or why not get the whole hog, one of each of the seasonings over at the madcanadianbbq.com and save even more money by using that promo code SLIPCAST10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order. Mad, Can- Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where they have your butt covered. 